Okay, so uh, this video is solely for the global server crowd. So if you are playing on EU, Asia uh, and Japan servers, this video will be relevant to you. Uh, no news for the NA server for today, but I will have some videos tomorrow for it. Uh, for the global servers, I wanted to discuss uh, the week one of uh, the content that you're getting. So developers released this April update roadmap a few days ago and basically it explains all of the content that's coming. Uh, I won't touch on the week 2 and 3 right now because it's still quite far away. However, for week 1 you will be getting a lot of content and it would actually be useful for you to prep for that content because if you don't, as the thumbnail says, uh, you will be missing out on a lot of rewards. I want you to get prepped. Uh, the update is most likely coming uh, the first Thursday of April, so that would be what? Uh, probably the April 6th would be my guess. So yeah, uh, you still have quite a few days to prepare and I'll explain all of the best ways how to prepare for each of the content. Okay, so first of all, uh, you will be getting a new raid and the raid is Boiling Waterfall. I will make a guide uh, on the raid as well as all of the other new content uh, sooner to the release date. But for now, I'm just going to be discussing how to prepare for it real quickly. Okay, so first of all, uh, if you are a bit newer to the game or uh, a bit lower on the damage side, uh, you will need a healer for this dungeon. Uh, and there are a few healers that I would recommend building for it, so by far the cheapest and the best one for it would be Lolo, the Water Howl. Uh, this is first of all because her heal is a little bit better than the Konamiya you may have from before. And second of all, uh, she removes one half for effects and since that boss does provide heal block with some of these attacks, uh, you will want to cleanse it before uh, of sort of uh, applying that heal towards your team. Another good option for healing is Anadol, so if you have her summoned and skilled up, uh, do definitely consider using her here. However, since she is a nat 5, she will be a little bit more hard, uh, harder to build, and there's a good chance that you will not be able to skill it up fully before the dungeon releases. And one of the better last picks, also a nat 5, is the uh, Water Archangel Ariel, but also if you do not have the Devil Mons, I definitely don't recommend uh, dedicating them to Nat 5 healers because uh, the Nat 4 healers will do their job just fine and you definitely don't need to over invest into uh, Nat 5 ones. And a few other budget options, uh, they will not be as good as the three that I've mentioned because they do not cleanse uh, the heal block and you may need to wait it out until the heal block disappears but First of all, Konamiya, everyone has it, uh, the heal is pretty good and it should be enough to cover you for the beginning, however I do definitely recommend building uh, a healer that can cleanse uh, a harmful effect like the Lolo. And another option would be the light uh, brother sister I guess you can call of Lolo and that's Shushu. Uh, her heal is usually a little bit stronger overall, however she also doesn't uh, provide the cleanse for that heal block, she only cleanses damage over time, which uh, the heal block isn't a damage over time unfortunately, so it cannot be cleansed. But uh, what you can do is actually apply immunity, so you do not even receive the, the, the heal block from the boss, so this is another decent option for it. And now the second most important unit to build for this dungeon is the Water Frankenstein Tractor. So uh, there will be a very annoying minion phase uh, during the boss and to deal with that minion phase uh, you either need to do a lot of damage, uh, do damage that penetrates uh, the buffs on the enemy, so for example stuff like Karambit or Cassie, however it's not as efficient as just you building this unit. Uh, the best way to deal with that minion phase is by using CC effects and Tractor is by far the best unit for that. Uh, his first charge skill or the second skill overall uh, only costs 2 mana and it has an 82% chance to provoke all enemies for 11 seconds. And the best part about this guy is that the range of this attack is insanely high, meaning that uh, with one attack you will be more than able to cover pretty much all of the minions coming towards your side. As you can see, uh, the range is massive and uh, pretty much this is like the area of the dungeon itself. 
So imagine you're standing there and minions are coming towards you, you just go here, pop a little provoke, it pretty much covers your half of the arena and you'll be able to deal with the minions pretty easily. And the best thing about Tractor is you do not need to level it up that far. Uh, mine is level 70, but uh, he will work just fine as long as uh, this skill is fully maxed out. It doesn't matter if the other skills are maxed out. As long as this skill is maxed out, you're just as fine. And uh, you don't even need to evolve him at all. Uh, make sure that he just is awakened level 5 uh, to get those awakening bonuses. The rest really doesn't matter. He can stay level 50 if you wish. I mean, you will need to get uh, 5 stacks for awakening. But keep him at level 50. Uh, he will do, of course, less damage, but uh, you only need him for the provoke, so that's pretty much about it. Uh, for runes, of course, make sure that it has high accuracy. I just popped whatever, but since I have to uh, quickly uh, run up the dungeon in like 10 seconds, but make sure that this unit has close to max accuracy because this is the main use that you're using for. Was my camera frozen again? Oh, come on. So you saw my still face for 5 minutes, okay. Uh, so basically the next thing that will be coming out is the hero area and for this area of course I'll also cover it more in depth uh, closer to the release but just uh, explaining on what you need to know and how to prepare for it. So uh, the main thing about hero area are these quests and these quests basically provide you with a lot of gold as well as room pieces for crafting runes. So uh, these quests, uh, you can have 5 of these quests uh, for each region. And on top of that, uh, these quests are exclusive to each summoner, meaning that currently I'm on cliff and I'm able to complete uh, all 15 of these quests. And if I switch to Kina, for example, I will be able to complete these quests uh, again. And the same thing with Orbia, meaning that in total you can do uh, 45 of these quests in total per week. These are weekly quests. And uh, all of these weekly quests give a lot of gold and a lot of room pieces. So Potentially, if you do not prepare for it, you will be missing out on a lot of gold and a lot of legendary runes because these rune pieces allow you to craft runes. Yeah, if you go to the alchemy procession, as you can see at level 4, level 5, you are able to craft runes. So you can either craft specific runes with the pieces or you can craft random ones if you do not have any pieces. Uh, so yeah, definitely do not miss out on uh, doing that. And how you prepare for it is simply uh, go and level all of your summoners to level 60. You can switch to the summoner by using this button. Once you are level 60, uh, you need level 60 because uh, at that level you are only able to access uh, the hero area and before it, it is actually locked for you. So pretty much you want to level all of your summoners to level 60 to not miss out on a lot of gold. And the best way to do that is first of all uh, running path of growth that by far gives the highest xp amount of any dungeon while excluding some super hard rates of course uh, second of all uh, after doing all of the daily runs uh, another great option are the repeater quest and if you go to this one as you can see it only costs a uh, one repeat uh, token to start and it actually gives 12,000 xp so this is another great way to level up uh, your summoner and the third way, of course, when you're done with the daily stuff, is to just go AFK farm for some random mobs. So just pick any continent, uh, go to the map, uh, open the creature panel, choose any creature, go there, uh, preferably go to an empty channel if you have one, and just uh, go all the farm whatever mobs you can. Leave it overnight if you want. Uh, the XP will not be a lot, but it will stack up eventually, allowing you to level up those units level the summoner and yeah and the last thing you're getting is uh, it seems like it just says a uh, new pvp content but i'm around 99 percent sure that it will be the battlefield because this is pretty much the only content that pvp content that you are still missing and as much as some people may not enjoy this content because it is very unbalanced it is necessary to do because uh, this is like the main source of sky stones. I would say like 50% of your daily sky stones come from here. So you will want to do it eventually. And the way you prepare for this is actually pretty simple. Uh, it is a fully PvP mode. It's a 9v9 mode. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to go too deep into how to build teams for it. I'm mostly going to uh, introduce some 
miscellaneous things that you need to know. So, first of all, uh, whether you're gonna be playing safely or whether you're gonna be playing offensively, you sort of really need to do this. And if you go to the right section, uh, check all of the rides that you have. And uh, your goal is to get a ride that has the fast movement speed. I know that in Global there was some kind of a mini event where you could receive a very limited uh, bunny. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, Spring Blossom Rabbit. Uh, you could receive this unit, uh, this ride rather, and it already had the fast movement speed. So if you have it, uh, you're set. If you don't, uh, since most of the free ones only provide normal movement speed, you will want to buy either a white or the black stallion and this one is super cheap to get from the Trial of Ascension store. So if you go here, go to the Ascension store and as you can see, uh, you can buy either one for 100,000 tokens. You get around 200,000 per TOA rotation if you complete both normal and hard mode. And uh, after asking around, I heard that the Trial of Ascension resets uh, in around two days for you as well. So this is pretty much the first thing you need to do is ignore all the other purchases. Uh, go climb the tower as fast as you can and uh, purchase one of these if you already don't have a ride that has a fast movement speed. And the second thing, this will be a bit harder to do, especially if you're more on the free-to-play side, but if you are able to level up your account, uh, I know this is definitely achievable for a free-to-play player because I pretty much spent like, what, 20 euros on this game and I'm at 56 right now, so uh, the big milestone to get will be level 53 and that's because you get another 5% movement speed uh, from a level up bonus right here. You get some from the earlier ones, uh, but I think the earliest one is like in the 30s, so that is easily achievable, but uh, if possible, do try to push for level 53. Uh, to unlock that additional extra uh, movement speed bonus because it will definitely be needed whether you're playing safely or offensively. You want to either be able to run away or uh, be able to catch up uh, to opponents uh, whichever playstyle you're playing on. And the best way to level up uh, your account level is to simply level all of your units. Uh, the Nat 5s give the most XP followed by Nat 4 so just pick any unit that you have go fully level them up and you'll be receiving a lot of XP. Uh, another great way to level up and sort of combines with the previous point is to actually level up your summoners because each summoner level will give you 500 XP. So if you level all three of your summoners to 60, that will be a very huge chunk of XP overall. So make sure to do that and get that extra uh, ride speed going. And the last thing you want to uh, keep in mind for the battlefield is that you should have a little, at least a little bit of gold saved up because you will want to be buying these uh, purple pickaxes uh, as these are required to mine uh, the sky stones in the battlefield and you want to be getting the highest tier possible. There is legendary but the legend ones are pretty expensive so I don't recommend going for those for battlefield and sort of keeping them for field events if you participate in those. But for battlefield, uh, try to purchase the purple one. It's not really worth purchasing these because first of all they're slower and if you check the durability compared to their price, uh, this is pretty much the same price per use. I mean, I think the blue one is even more expensive than the purple one, I think. So yeah, just buy a lot of these uh, so you can efficiently mine in the field and that way rank up to higher levels, get more sky stones, get more gold and secure the win for your team. So yeah, that's pretty much for all of the tips on how to prepare for the update. Uh, do not miss out because I know especially with the hero area, I really missed out on it and it cost me a lot of gold because it took me weeks uh, to level up all of the summons before I first of all realized that the missions are repeatable and second of all managed to actually find efficient ways uh, to level them up. So yeah, I uh, hope this helped out and uh, peace.